Now, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents, Isaiah chapter 4. We're going to start at verse 4, the last three verse. yeah, the last three verses. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning, and the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day, and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense, and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime for the heat, and for a place of refuge, and for a covert or covering from the storm and from the rain. Now listen, that uh, we're stopping there for a minute. We got about three more other Uh, verses to read, not verses, chapters almost. But what I want to share with you is God is so in control and we forget that. Sometimes we feel like we're being pelted by, by life storms and by life's torrential rains and we're being beaten and battered by the hailstones falling from the sky. And we feel like we're being burnt on every side by by every source of heat there is on this planet. But God's in control. He knows who his people are. He knows how to rescue you. He knows how to make a way where there is no way. I know a lot of us are bothered by everything that's going on in the Middle East. A lot of us see what's going on. We see the problems. We see the as Lynn was talking about the, the how they're being used as pawns by the people who are really in control, who hold the money bags of society. But let me tell you this. No matter what is going on, God, God is. No matter what is going wrong, God is. And he is also in the middle of everything that's going right. So when you think that God has turned his back, no. There is a plan he's laid out that he's going to carry out all the way into eternity. And that means he's got to go through the rapture. He's got to go through the tribulation period. He's got to go through the millennial kingdom to get to eternity. And when we get into eternity, we're not going to be at war anymore, y'all. All that's going to come to a screeching halt. So even though it looks like things are escalating now, even though it looks like things are, are, are hitting the fan, so to speak, it's going to be more of it. But remember who's on your side. If God be for you, who can be against you? Who can, listen, no matter what schemes are out there, no matter what goes on against you, no matter what lies are told on you, no matter what people try to work against you, what demonic attacks you come up under, God is the winning. He's the winning factor in this whole thing. And if he wins, you win. If he wins, I win. If he wins, we win. And we know, according to the word, he wins. So no matter what, none of us loses. We may have a setback. We might have a delay. We might lose a few pennies here and there. But overall, we win. And that's what you have to remember. Who is the one on your side? And you know, personally you know. You know what kind of relationship you are formulating with him. You know how much time you spend soaking him up. You know if you have a hunger and thirst for him and his righteousness. You know if you're living a holy life. If you're obeying him, you love him. If you obey his commandments, you love him. You know that. And you know the opposite side to that coin as well. But the bottom line is God is a God of tender mercies. He is a God of judgment. So don't let that slide by you because he does say, God is not mocked whatsoever man soweth that shall he also reap. But also remember that he is a caring, compassionate father. He is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. 
He's not a dead, deep dad that throws his hands up in the air and said, forget you. You made your bed, lie in it. He's a tender, caring God. And this is, we're still in the dispensation of grace, which means unmerited favor. This is the grace we don't even deserve. So take advantage of it while you can. You better do like the Bible says, pray, 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 pray. Because this is the time to get those prayers answered. Ask God for his favor. He says in Psalms, I think it's Psalms 102, the time to favor her. The set time is come. Get in under that covering right now. Stay in the ark of safety. Don't step out of bounds. Don't get tripped up by the enemy. Don't get caught up in your desires, your whims, and your, your emotional um, uh, uh, fantasies or whatever it is you go through. Don't follow suit with that because that will take you out into, into danger's way, into the paths of danger. And this is both an encouragement and a warning. The Lord gave me Proverbs chapter 7. And I want you to hear it because a lot of times the, the word the Lord gave me was disaster. And what happens in a disaster is things can go wrong suddenly, suddenly. And some of those things go wrong by the choices we make. Not all of them, just some of them by the choices we make or the choices we refuse to make. And then there are disasters that happen as a result of powers that are beyond our control. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Okay. So we get that it's a spiritual warfare. And because of all these different factors factored into our equation, there are some bizarre things that go on in our lives from time to time. But no matter what, God delivers us out of them all, doesn't he? His word says that, out of them all. Mm. Let me uh, quote real quick Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all thine iniquities? And check this out, who heals all thy diseases, mm. who fills thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. I love that. That reminds me when things go wrong, I'm still on the right side. God is on my side. This is going to end up all right because of God before me, who can be against me? This is going to end up all right because no weapon formed against me will prosper. This is going to end up all right because God is on my side. Mm. God knows my name. God knows who I am. He knows how many hairs are on my head. For some of you, he might know if it's one, two, or three hairs on your head. But the bottom line is he knows. So be encouraged and understand that God is for you. Okay, go with me to Proverbs chapter 7. Ah, I want you to hear this. Because this is, this is that warning. This is that warning. All right. Now, this is a father who's admonishing his son to obey. This is kind of a type of God warning us against all of the doorways, all of the pathways, all of the portals that lead to sin and demonic infiltration. There are some demonic attacks you will be under because you're a child of God. Then there are other demonic attacks that, that you might find yourself under because you opened a door that should have stayed locked. So listen to this. And this is that admonition and warning combined. All in love. For at the window of my casement, excuse me, at the window of my house, I look through my casement and beheld among the simple ones 
I discern among the youths a young man void of understanding. Now with verse 7. Passing through the street near her corner. And he went the way to her house. We're not talking about a literal woman. This is an allegory. Everything is symbolism on this thing right here. Verse 9. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without. She's outside. That's what it means when it says without. She is outside now in the streets and lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him and with an impotent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me this day. Have I paid my vows? Therefore come I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face. And I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings and tapestries, with carved works and fine linens of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves in loves. For the good man is not at home. He is gone. On, on a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him and he will come home at the appointed, at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caught him. She caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the, of the stocks till a dart strike through his liver as a bird hasted to the snare and knoweth not that it is for his life. In other words, like a bird rushing toward the snare, don't even know it's a trap, and he's rushing towards it and doesn't even know it's there to kill him. That's what that's actually saying. See, that's what Satan does. He will entice you. He will lure you. The Bible says that we're drawn away of our own lusts. <laughs> what happens is you're, you're contemplating. A thought comes into your mind. And then you ponder on it. Instead of rebuking the thought and casting down all wicked imaginations, you're pondering on it. And then you're feeling the sensations that come from the temptation of it. Now you're being enticed and the seed is planted. And it, bring, it brings forth sin. Now you're acting on it. So you have to be careful because during this time, knowing that these demons are out here in, in, in packs like dogs in heat, they're out there running in packs looking for whom they may devour, like the Bible says, like a lion seeking a, who he may devour. You have to be careful because to be under attack is one thing. But to be the one having opened the door and unlocked it, allowing the enemy to come in like a flood, that's a whole different story. Now you not only have to mop up the mess that you made, but now you got to go through a lot of your first works getting rid of all that. So you don't want to have to go through all that. That's why you want to obey. When you obey, life is simple. When you obey God's ways, life is safer as well. You are under the shadow of the Almighty. You're under his divine protection. Read Psalms 91. See, he sets his angels round about you. You are protected coming and going. Deuteronomy 28. You're blessed coming in. You're blessed going out. Blessed. I mean, everything about your life is blessed. But, 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 you have to, I always say, you got to stay up under God's armpits. You got to stay all up near his bosom. You got to peel your ear to his heartbeat. He will warn you when Satan is about to pull the wool over your eyes. But are you asking? Are you consulting with him? Are you seeking his face? Or are you going to romp, to romp, to romp, to romp, totally oblivious to all the enemies that are around you waiting to pounce? <laughs> are you covering yourself, as Lynn says, according to the word, in the armor of God? Are you covering yourself in the blood of Christ? 
Are you constantly asking God to keep you filled with his Holy Spirit? See, there's one baptism, but many in fillings. You have to constantly be filled up with your with his Holy Spirit. That's part of your uh, of your arsenal as well, you know. Then you have to use the name of Jesus when you get tempted, when things go crazy and you're ready to make these rash decisions because it's the rash, emotional, hasty decisions when life pounces on you that th those are the kind of decisions that can bring disaster into your life. And that's why, mm -hmm, that's why you must consult with God. Acknowledge him in all your ways. And he will, not he might, he will direct your path. I ask the Lord often, if I'm going the wrong way, block it. Block it. If I think I'm hearing from you and I didn't, block it. Don't even let it come to fruition. Protect me, not only from the enemy, but protect me from me, the enemy. Protect me from my own stupidity, from my own foolishness. I don't want to be seen as this young man, simple, out in the streets where I don't belong, out at, at the, at the uh, um, subject to the elements exposed out there where I don't have any defense mechanisms because I don't even know I'm walking through enemy territory. There's a song that says, are you walking into the enemy's camp? Laying your weapons down. Shedding your armor as you go. What? Leaving it on the ground. No, we've got to be strong in the power of his might. Prove to the enemy, we are the army of the Lord and we've won the victory. That's what you got to do. So we're in these weird times right in here. Everything is precarious. Everything is strange. If you've got different types of, 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 of clouds hanging over your head and you know any minute it's going to come pelting down on you, you ask God to hold back the rain, give you favor, give you mercy, and give you more time. Guess what? God's the one in control, not the person on the other end of that phone. Not AI. You hear me? God's the one in control. All right. Now I'm saying this for one of the members of our church. So if you guys are in this situation on YouTube, follow suit. If you have a relative in your house you're taking care of, this is a practical approach right here. Find out from their doctor if they can write them up and prescribe an oxygen thing, if they can prescribe some equipment. If they have certain types of equipment in their house, neither the gas company nor the light company can turn your utilities off. Hmm, that's right. They can't. So ask God to give you all kind of witty ways to cover your household. God will do it. As long as it's not a lie, God will do it if you're walking in truth. So anyway, the bottom line is, God is in control of all of our situations. God knows what you need, even when you don't know what to ask. Remember that. God knows what's going on in this world because he is the one who is in control. See, some of you think the devil's in control. Just to let you know, no, he's not. No, the devil's not in control. And I shut down all forms of retaliation in the name of Jesus. The devil is not in control. God is from beginning to end. God is in, is, and I'm saying is even for past tense events. God is in control even when Jesus was hanging on the cross. God is in control when Jesus came down from the cross, was buried, and three days later rose from the dead. God is in control with Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father. God is in control. He's in control of each and every one of our lives. 
No weapon formed against us will prosper. There is nothing, or whatever devices have been formed against us, God will bring it to naught. Read Psalms 27. You look around wondering where your enemies are. You won't be able to find them. God knows how to make them disappear from the scene, y'all. God knows how to handle what you can't handle. He knows how to protect you and guard you and, and, and keep you from all forms of danger. He knows. But you got to handle things his way. You cannot jump into your emotional trick bag and think you're going to handle it. Because you're not. You're going to make it worse. When you want to tell somebody off, keep your mouth shut and ask God to handle it. When you want to raise your voice and holler at somebody, ask God to settle your spirit because he will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. See, when you go through this life, I don't care how dark the storm is, how hard the wind is blowing, how hard the water is pelting down on you or the or the uh, uh, the, the sleet and the, the ice is bouncing off your head, I don't care what. If you have your right armor, if you have your right garment on, if you have the covering of Jesus, put on Christ. Put them on like clothes. You won't get wet. You won't get burnt. You might go through the fire, but you'll come out on the other side totally unscathed. You might go through the flood, but you come out on the other side totally dry and you won't drown. That's right. God might even teach you how to swim while you're in the middle of that flood because you're going to learn some things in those times in your lives. You're going to learn some things because God is our teacher. That's what a father does. He teaches, he guides, he warns, he admonishes. So listen to him, y'all. Put your ear close to his bosom. No matter what is going on with this financial system, no matter what's going on with the economy, no matter what's going on in this country, that country, this president, this dictator, this whatever, God is in control of your life if you have yielded your life to him. Because see, God ain't going to bully his way in. He must be invited. And that's why you need Jesus in your heart. He's your raincoat. He's your galoshes. Hmm. You hear me? He's the helmet that stops your head from being hurt. Know that God is there and he's for you. Know that. Be convinced. I don't know how many ways to say it. I probably said it about a thousand ways on all these videos. I've got 2,200 some odd videos. And I don't know if you still get it yet or not. But God is for you. So whatever you do, don't run from him, y'all. Run to him. He's waiting with bated breath with his arms wide open. He knows the plans he has for you plans to bless you, not harm you. There's a song that says, uh, I'm going to quote it, out of the fire to the flames of another trial. When you've done, when you've said all you, you can and you've done all you can and you're back where you started again. But in the heat of the trial, he will pull you through. When you don't understand it, he is tried and true. No matter the questions, God has an answer for you. So when the rain falls hard and the storm winds blow and you feel like it'll never blow over, know that God has another plan. Amen? If we ever get confronted with forces on our land, make sure that you pray in Jesus' name that they cannot see you or hear you that they will pass you by. That's right. And do you no harm in Jesus' name. Excellent advice. That's 